Hello again, and welcome back to Legally Cited. This is Jesse, aka BGFH, and I am back for another hardware review video. This time we are actually taking a look at another Android device, believe it or not. Uh, we took a look at the uh, Samsung tablet uh, a year or so ago. Well, here's the thing. Um, Google tablets, you know, they're just not releasing really many updates to them. A lot of the apps really aren't as compatible, either due to, um, you know, due to manufacturer, whatever, or due to the screen size. Um, a lot of things are really just geared toward phones, as far as I can tell, in Android land. So, I took it upon myself to purchase a Pixel 3a XL. Earlier this spring, or late spring, uh, Google announced at their Google event, uh, they announced the 3A series of phones, the 3A and the 3A XL, basically their budget line of their Pixel smartphones. So I wanted something that was affordable, but something that really wasn't, you know, just kind of a really, really low end, kind of a low spec garbage uh, device, you know, I want and I also wanted something basically from Google because I want to get updates, you know, at least very close to when they come out. You know, that's my that's always been my major problem with Android is the fragmentation. You either have carriers or you have manufacturers blocking these updates. You now, you get a brand new device. Um, you know, I got this nice Samsung tablet, this Galaxy Tab S3, and I'm still a version or two behind on Android because, of course I am. You know, they're just like, oh, well, Android, yeah, we just expect you to, maybe we'll give you an update or two, uh, but as far as major, you know, going from N, O to P, whatever, um, you kind of just have to buy a new device. So, I went with a Google branded device, so hopefully I'll get a couple good years out of this. This is the Pixel 3a XL. Selected. Hush. So this is it. Um, off. It's a nice phone. It's, uh, you know, it's, you have the smaller Pixel 3a. Of course, being low vision, I went with the XL because I wanted the larger screen. Screen off. And like I said, it's pretty comparable to my iPhone XS Max. It's a little bit smaller, but it looks really good. It's got the OLED screen. It just, it, like I said, it looks really nice. Um, the colors are sharp on it and everything like that. I'll show you a little bit more of that in a little bit. In a little bit. Um, top, hey, look at what we have here. We have a headphone jack. Yeah, how about that? And on the back, speaking of things other phones don't have, what do we have here? We have a touch sensor. Yeah. We actually have touch ID, essentially touch ID. We have a fingerprint sensor. So they put that on the back. Of course, we got our camera and our flash there. So we got all that. On the right hand side, you got your power button and your volume up and volume down button. And on the bottom, you have your speakers, your microphone grill, and your USB C charging port. The other unique aspect about the hardware here is once I unlock it, um, if I squeeze, you can almost kind of feel it when you do it on the left, the bottom left side of the device. 24 p.m. Um, you can add, you basically, you squeeze the phone and it brings up the Google Assistant. So you can, you know, just give your phone a little squeeze and, you know, uh, ask it what the weather is or whatever. So there's really not much more to say about the hardware. I mean, it feels good. It's kind of got this, uh, it's plastic, but it feels durable. It does not feel cheap. It's got this sort of, a, I would say kind of a matte finish on it. I got the gray model. It comes in a few different colors, but I just, I chose the dark gray because hey, why not? I haven't even gotten a case for it, but um, yeah. So the other thing that I should let you know is I'm not actually using this as a phone. I bought it as a phone or I bought the phone but I'm using it basically like a glorified iPod Android testing device. So I didn't put a SIM card in. I didn't, I'm already paying for my phone bill. I'm already paying for an add on Apple watch. I really didn't need another line. So I mainly wanted to be able to use this for work. I wanted to be able to 
know more about Android stuff on the phone side versus the tablet side because it's more common. I wanted to be able to test. I wanted to be able to, you know, use all these Android apps and try to find out good accessible apps that I want to that I want to play with, that I want to recommend, all that kind of stuff, just for personal and for work. So, no SIM card for me. It's basically an iPod. I can connect it to Wi-Fi. Works great. So I'm going to touch the fingerprint on the back. Let's fire it up. PM. Boom, there we go. Unlocked. Scan life. There Pixel we go. Launcher. Accessibility volume set to 60%. So that is the regular Google uh, talkback voice. Now, things aren't going to be quite as you guys will have them if you get this device uh, shortly after watching this because I got this in May, but in early June, um, not only you know, does this have a modern version of Android on it, but I put and the Android Q beta on it. So I'm actually running a beta <laughs> version of the next Android OS. Along with that, I'm going to set this down because I have it unlocked. So Lizarillo at Play Store has one notification messages, actions, shortcuts at Play Store, at Chrome, camera, Voice it's responsive. I I really double like tap to activate double tap and hold. I like the press. way the haptic feel on this. I really like the the kind of the way that the vibration, the haptic feedback on Android is. I really do like that. Here's the other thing I really like about Android versus iOS. I take one finger, tap tap tap. Magnification on three hundred seventy six percent. I have simple turn on magnification, and even better, once I have magnification on, I can just look at this. I can pinch to zoom. Magnification 200. I don't have to do this clunky ass double tap and hold and slide nonsense. I just take two fingers to pan, and there you go. Look at this. I mean, it's just. And then if I want to get rid of it, hey, let's just triple tap again. Magnification off. Magnification is off. You just go under settings and enable that gesture, and boom, we're good to go. So, I can bring up my app switcher app here. Suggestions. Scan it's a little hard to do Home when I'm, one of two. Uh, there we Next go, list. so there's my app drawer. So I bring up with two fingers, like I said, it works good there. I can do my, Notes. let's do, let's go back. Home screen one of let's two. bring down my notifications, because look at what we have. PM. Those are my Double notifications. In my, in Android Q, just like iOS 13, Google has gone back and embraced the darkness again. Yes, Google used to have this really nice dark gray look to a lot of their apps and settings screens. I remember when I got my original Nexus 7. Yeah, it was a thing. It was dark. I loved it. And then just like everybody has to copy Apple, Android went and made their a lot of their UI. They made it just a really blindingly white. Didn't care for it at all. Pixel um, launcher. Friday, but yeah, 28th. I'll basically, I've got it. Boom. Discover. We Limit got that. I can go to my home screens here, but like a lot of the stuff, I've got a dark mode um, with uh, Android Q, which will be coming out sometime later this fall. Um, but yeah, Google Talkback works on here. Uh, I did download a couple of other voices, but I think it's probably because of Android Q. I didn't actually try changing voices before upgrading to Android, Android Q beta, <laughs> it won't let me switch. Like I have acapella on here. I think I put, I might've put another one on here, but I can't remember, but it will not let me switch voices. Like they appear in the list, but double tapping them does absolutely nothing. I have no idea why. Um, hopefully upon the full release of Android Q, hopefully that will be ironed out and I can change the voice because I don't mind the built-in uh, talk back voice, but I would rather maybe change it a little bit. But I mean, this isn't really so much an accessibility review. This is a hardware review. You know, the performance, again, let me, uh, let me pick this thing up. And if I squeeze on the bottom, what's the weather like? Right now in St. Paul, it's 81 and partly cloudy. Today, it'll be partly cloudy, with a forecasted high of 85 and a low of 67. 
What's the weather like for the rest of this weekend? Here's the forecast for St. Paul. Okay, and then I can just use talk back. So I can go yoink. Let's see if I can do the gesture with my thumb. Eh. What about next week? Enlist eight items. Uh. Fry. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's really kind of tough to do this Home holding, screen, like looking at one phone Friday, through another, uh, that kind of a thing. Play store. Games oh, okay. Well, I didn't mean to open the Play, Play store, store, but sure. Shut up. Previously installed games. Play Let's go back. Store. Games for you. So, but yeah, you're getting to see just how quickly everything loads. You know, I mean, for being an entry level phone, this still has, it's still pretty dang fast. Even taking out of the box, that was one of the first things that I actually commented on is like I said, the touchscreen feels good. Um, you know, like the Nexus 7, I always kind of complained that I always thought with, I didn't know if it was a talk back thing or if it was a Nexus 7 touchscreen thing, but it just, none of the, I couldn't get the gestures to consistently work the way I wanted it to. I got the Samsung Galaxy Tab S3 a little while back and I thought that screen was a lot better. And just like that, this Pixel 3 AXL, the screen is really good. Like I have no problem doing yes. the gestures yes. on a regular, Home screen one of two. you know, I, I really don't have a problem doing two most of the two. gestures, getting them to work. Um, you know, I, I've used a lot of different apps on here. Text and scan life. So I've got a Back scan life barcode reader, lens. uh, Back Google lens, which, uh, I haven't played with that a lot yet, but reader. I got Actions, voice dream reader, Bard mobile. got Bard mobile, Action, KNFB, reader. KNFB, which I've Action, tried, it works, short, Envision AI, Envision Action, AI. Text, grabber. text grabber, Prime Video, Prime, Amazon Kindle, Amazon Music, Netflix, Mario Run, Cozy Magnifier, and Microsoft Cozy Plus. Magnifier, that seems to work pretty Actions, well, Acapella TTS, voices. Acapella TTS, uh, kind of broken in uh, and Android Q right now, Mobility, at least for me. Installer. This is kind of a neat thing I just learned about Raz. So let's see, if I go open this Raz thing, um, this is kind of an app that will tell you, I can go, I can look at things by disability category. So vision, 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 speech, speech, mobility, mobility. So there's text and there's graphic. That's why it repeats it twice when I flick. Cognition, cognition, health, graphic. Help. But you see how quickly it, it responds. Home screen two of two. Um, you know, I mean, I can bring and down my notification shade. Notification. Go back. Pixel launcher. Um, I can. Play store has messages. Uh, Chrome. Sure, let's go Back. open Chrome. Progress bar. Chrome. One hundred percent. Heading links. I can Headings. do basically na change my navigation links. style. Headings. Trending article. Upload VR. No next heading. L Oculus Connect 4, Controllers Online. Oh, Oculus. Oculus Connect 3, Monarch Heading 3. I forget even what I was Hardware looking up. I don't even remember what tab I'm on right tracking. now. Possible but, you know, available. I mean, again, I can just do that. I can go back. Um, I can go home. You know, Overview I can button. get home my little home button, button there. I've got my three track, buttons on the bottom. I've got a software home press. button. Home and I've got like an app switcher Pro. button, essentially. It says there's an overview button. Come on. Overview. There we Recent go. Apps. So there is essentially your app switcher. Let's see. Chrome. Close Actions Chrome. Close, close that. List. Oh, okay. Well, don't Recent care. App. There we go. Google Play. Google Google Assistant. Close Back that. Google Play. Settings. Sure. Let's go in there. Talk back settings. So you know everything Navigation. is just Heading. really List. responsive. Um, Talk back. Navigate There's a few button. niceties like with voiceover that I like um, that TalkBack does not do. And I still am using, you know, I still have a better version of Voice Dream Reader for iOS. Yes, Voice Dream Reader exists on Android and it's not bad. Um, <laughs> but especially with Voice Dream Scanner and some of the other like Cloud Sync stuff that they have in the iOS version, I just, I use that app way too much. And so, and you know, there's a lot more accessibility stuff. There's a lot more games and things coming to iOS than Android, but I absolutely like, I, I love being able to have a modern, a modern Android device. I can download apps, I can download games, I can test the accessibility features, install betas, um, all that kind of a thing. I have not been able to get this to work with Reflector. 
I have not been able to mirror it directly to my computer, so I haven't been able to do direct feed footage of this phone like I have been able to do with my iPhone and iPad. I'm gonna try to continue figuring that out, but I, again, even with my tablet, um, I've, I've had trouble. I haven't been able to get it to mirror, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this so I can do more direct feed videos for you guys on Android, but if you are looking for an affordable phone, I know, like I said, I, I really love my iPhone, I do, but I'm not gonna lie, they're expensive. <laughs> they absolutely are. Um, you know, the camera is good. I use KNFB Reader. I use it as a, I use a cozy magnifier. Um, Talkback is very responsive. Uh, you know, everything like that. The battery life is super good. Uh, I, I hadn't had a chance to use this thing for almost a week. Uh, I took it out of my bag uh, yesterday just to see where the battery was. It was still on, it was still active and it was at like 26%. Uh, so standby time is insane. Um, but even like use time, like if I, you know, when I was testing this and when I was getting everything set up, I was using this thing a lot. I would say, especially like the first week or two and I would get really solid battery life. I don't know. I mean, I could get a solid couple days out of it. Um, I would say medium to sort of high usage. So you know, your, your mileage may vary, but I've been impressed with the battery life. Again, if you want the 3A, uh, search at like $399, and then $499 if you want the XL model. Um, this is a 64 gig model. There's really not any storage. You know, there's not, there's not other storage in it. You know, like you can't put a micro SD card in there. Um, it's an entry level phone, so you're not getting a whole range of storage sizes i want to say there's like four gigs of ram in here so again for what it is i mean it's a, it's a solidly built phone it's sturdy the performance is good even when you're running accessibility software like talkback or um, magnification gestures i've used both i've used them together and it's held up really well and the best thing about this is theoretically because this is a Google One device, um, you know, Android O, or no, Android P being the current version when this phone was uh, released, hopefully we're going to get at least two to three years of Android updates out of this. And, you know, when they announce Android R or whatever, we won't be left in the dust like all the other device Android, Android devices that I've purchased over the years. So that is just an overview, a look at the Pixel 3a XL. You can get a lot of different places. Like I said, I got it directly from the Google store, but you can get it at your local local store, your electronic store. You can get it at a lot of cell phone carriers. And if you want to use it like an iPod, just like I say, like, like I did, um, you know, it tries to urge you, hey, you should put a SIM card in here. You should do that, but you don't have to. Um, and it works basically just fine as an iPod-esque device. So, you know, this being a little bit of a cheaper entry point into smartphone accessibility, uh, it is a nice, solid option. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Follow me on Twitter at BGFH79 or Mixer.com slash BGFH or Illegally Cited. Com. So we'll wrap it up here. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, I will chat with you guys in the next video. Later. Stop recording video. <laughs>